Hey, greetings there, everyone. It's Gleecon here again with another episode of Lord of Warcraft. On our last one, we we read a uh, the Warcraft Legends manga, and we we just had a little side story about some people from the Dark Moon Fair. Um, and yeah, you could say that that story is accurately placed um, in this first year, but. An argument can be made because Dark Moon Fair doesn't really show up now. Just because Dark Moon Fair doesn't show up until about a year after World of Warcraft came out doesn't mean that the concept, the people, didn't exist. So sure, there's no 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 real harm, no foul on that, but um, it's a little bit suspect placement there. Um, we've also been reading the World of Warcraft. Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting, which is a revamp of the Warcraft D&D setting. Um, we're reading Lands of Mystery right now. We're still on chapter one because we're taking our time. We're taking a leisurely sightseeing stroll through it. So stay a while and listen as we continue this by looking at the Fellwood. So Fellwood, it says, has a population of 9,500. Um, that's almost, that's close. It's That's a pinch more than Darkshore. Um, there are no major settlements there, which is true. When you quest there, it's just little camp after little camp. Um, I, I don't know what Eridun is, unless that's supposedly a demon language, is that, because that would be the Eridar, maybe. Um, and so there are a combination of night elves and demons here. I could damn near smell the corruption as I walked into Fellwood, and I most certainly could see it. The trees in this once beautiful forest are twisted and scarred to a level only rivaled by the plague lands in Lordaeron, and even then, the damage here seems more terrible somehow, mainly because some of the twisted plants and trees here are still alive. The weather here isn't much different from Ashenvale, except that it seems harder to breathe. I don't think the air is poisonous, but unclean mist clouds the sky, and I can't imagine it's healthy to stay in the area for long. The main road was safe enough, but even there I ran into the occasional diseased beast. Or creatures. People and culture. I wasn't expecting to run into many people outside the Emerald Sanctuary, but there are a few scattered druids throughout the forest trying new salves on the planet, plants in the area. This is important because Felwood is home to several unusual herbs that when uncorrupted are useful for healing. I also note that there are horde druids trying to do the same thing. In fact, I even encountered a Torin and Night Elf pair working together. This close to Moonglade, the faction boundaries seem less intense. There's an air of desperation here, and those living here seem well aware that every non-demon is an asset. Oh, we're having the same glitch we had before. Um, at least it's not cutting out. It's still staying, but the I wonder if it's my camera that's actually going to start to die, because um, it's having a blink out again. The northern tip of Fellwood is controlled by the Timbermaw Furbolgs, and the ones here proved friendlier than the group I encountered in Najara. After proving myself by bashing a few dead wooden Felpaw Furbolgs for them, their leaders granted me access to their tunnel system, which, um, which I used later to reach Moonglade and Winterspring. I decided to use Shatterscar Vale to make my way to Mount Hygel, since the Timbermall have closed off their tunnels to it. Um, and, sh and that is the entrance to the tunnel where you can really focus on Timbermall rep geography. Felwood is to the west of Mount Hygel and east of Darkshore. The series of caves on the northern edge serve as a path to both Winterspring and Moonglade. Ashenvale lies directly to the south, and Fellwood's borders encroach on Ashenvale more and more each passing day as the corrupted terrain slowly expands. The water here, if it can be called that, has been reduced to a green slime, and I wasn't foolish enough to test if it was safe to drink. The center of Fellwood has an immense lake of this muck, with several rivers and streams branching off throughout the woods. I saw several other pools of the gunk from my vantage point on the road as well, and I suspect some might be used as feeding pools for the demons in the area or the experimentation of warlocks. A river of this sludge divides Fellwood. This river feeds into considerably larger pools of slime. I was fortunate to have a full water skin when I entered the forest, else I'd likely be in as bad a shape as many of the animals here. The bears, deer, and wolves here are all corrupted and aggressive. Most of the other animals are similarly affected, but oddly the birds have not yet been tainted. Perhaps the birds have found another source of water and are smart enough to avoid the rivers and lakes here. The signs of corruption in the animals are obvious at a glance. One can see the flesh hanging from them in places much like zombies. 
These poor beasts are still alive, however, and in terrible pain. Blood Benham Falls, on the eastern side of Fellwood, near the center, is a waterfall of sludge that feeds all the rivers and other bodies of corrupted water in the area. This is likely where the demons go to make sure the water stays polluted, I imagine. I ran into several oozes and slimes here, but no matter how many I destroyed, there seem to be dozens more. I also found what I'd call elementals formed from the sludge. Disgusting monstrosities. Perhaps these creatures were once water elementals? In any case, I destroyed several of them, but their numbers were endless. This is not a good spot for a picnic. And Shatterscar Vale. While the rest of the forest is at least recognizable, most of the trees here have been completely obliterated and huge charred craters mark the ground. The locations where Infernals landed in the Third War. This is truly a terrible place. Felgars and Infernals still roam in packs. We have a picture of possibly a Burning Blade Orc. It's an orc. What is it? And probably a warlock because they've got a couple of succubi with them. Ah, that might be Feldon right here. We're describing a 24th level warlock. Ah, while we're at it, let's look at him. He is a male orc. Um, we're going to just skim through his stat, his stat block here. Ah, there we go. Now my camera kicked off right when it's nice and zoomed up on me. So what is up with that? Um... It's, it's a little bit, um, I wonder if I can just, see if we can just add that in and then let's add on a video capture device. Okay, so yeah, it's right off the bat. If you can look, see those lines on the screen, I... Um, I wonder if... Oh, but now it's also moved this up. So I can at least really minimize that for everyone, put it real small, so it's not as distracting. Um, but I wonder if my camera's dying, which sucks. It's, I'm only about a year old, as we talked about. This is the shows. So I'll, I will. I, I thought I messed with it before. It seemed okay, but it is obviously not. Um, I did read some some reviews on it when I first got it. So uh, sketch. Uh, we'll have to. Um, we will have to work on that. We being me. All right. Anyway. Um. Let's just read the description of Old Feldon. It says, This ancient orc obviously has lost none of his strength to age, and his bloodied robes and gruesome blade make him an intimidating sight. With the death of Gul'dan, Feldon has taken charge of the remainder of the Shadow Council and reestablished its powerful ties to the Burning Legion. He works extensively... Um, I'm going to try to just... See, even though even though I just removed it, it is staying on. So that's hmm. yeah. It's it's uh. Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. Uh, Guys and girls, um, I'll try one last time, but I have a feeling it's going to just do what it just did. Yeah, so it popped up, it's washed out, it's got lines on there, and it's, um, Okay, um, oops. all right, at least I'm going to unplug that so that it doesn't, <coughs> doesn't get in my, 
because it's like also my light, the light that goes with it, it's like flickering and blinking. All right, I'm sorry for that. Uh, I just wanted to mess around in real time, but uh, I apologize. Okay, with the death of Gul'dan, Feldon has taken charge of the remainder of the Shadow Council and reestablished its powerful ties to the Burning Legion. He works extensively with Lord Bane Hollow to further the Shadow Council's interests, most notably spreading the corruption of Felwood into other areas. Feldon seeks to corrupt the Druidic home of Moonglade, but thus far his efforts have been thwarted by the Emerald Circle and Remulos, the mighty son of Cenarius. Remulos is real. He's part of the game. Feldon, I'm not sure. Maybe I just can't remember. In combat, Feldon prefers to allow his two succubi companions, Mora and Salia, to lead the way into melee while he destroys his enemies with spells from a distance. If his succubi are not present, he attempts to summon help to fill their roles. He is not hesitant to cut down his foes in melee and retreats only if truly necessary. He prefers to use directly damaging spells over curses unless he expects the battle to last a long time. So he's hard to say with two succubi. Is he a demonology warlock? Maybe. What you consider him, but obviously he's not an affliction one. All right, so um, sites and settlements. Oh, it says, yeah, okay. Satyrs, demons, and cultists are the main occupants of Felwood, but the night elves struggle daily to regain a foothold. The horde has some interest in the land as well, but for what reason I cannot say. Blood Venom Post. This small but well-guarded outpost serves as the only stopping point for Horde members in the region. This outpost is mostly a Tauran establishment, but there are a good number of Orcs as well. The guards here constantly fight with the demons of Jadenar, since the outpost is close to the demonic city's borders. The guards at the Horde camp didn't attack me on sight, but they wouldn't allow me to pass either. I decided to be diplomatic and refrain from knocking the Orcs silly. In a dangerous place like this, I wouldn't want to deprive the Horde of a couple of their guards. Everyone who stands against the Legion here is an ally, like it or not. Deadwood Village. This is an actual village. The home of the Deadwood clan of Firbolgs. This encampment consists of little more than a mass of crude tents and basic wooden structures. Regardless, it is one of the two largest encampments of corrupted Firbolgs, and the ones here are more dangerous than usual. Emerald Sanctuary is a druidic encampment. The Emerald Circle, a subsect of the Cenarian Circle, maintains this safe haven as a refuge for all living creatures in Felwood. While the majority of the druids here are night elves, you will see a small number of Torin at the sanctuary as well, trading information and studying with their fellow servants of nature. The Emerald Circle reveres Cenarius, and many of the members maintain that he will manifest a new body and return to the world if given enough time to re recover. I believe that that maybe will be true. A night elf druid by the name of Aridin Bluewind is the leader of the small camp, and she explained the situation, especially since he's in the game. Felpaw Village. A bit of exploring led me to a corrupted Firbolg camp to the northwest of the main road. I put a few of the creatures out of their misery while investigating the area. I found Chieftain Bloodpaw, the Felpaw's clan leader, but I decided that it would be pointless to attack him with so many of his shamans and guards nearby. Felpaw Village is the second largest corrupted Firbolg camp in Felwood and one of the largest anywhere. Felpaws are even more deadly than the Deadwood Firbolgs. Satyrs also lurk close by. Iron Tree Woods, north of Blood Venom Falls and the Shatter Scar Vale is a small forest glade filled with corrupted ancients. A nearby druid told me that occasionally the spirits of the ancients that fell here can also be seen, but it seems impossible to communicate with them without some sort of magic object. I spent some time investigating an ancient night elf ruin here, where one massive statue remains intact. I wasn't able to find out much about the area with so many nasty critters nearby, though. Now, this is all I thought... Like, Felwood's not this big thing. This is one of the longest one we've done so far. Jadefire Glen, this large satyr encampment, represents the largest satyr community outside of Jadenar. The encampment is, encampment is located north of the Deadwood Village and south of Jadenar. Jadenar Run, another large satyr camp, Jadefire, oh, Jadefire Run, is likely the staging point for assaults on the nearby Timber Mall for Rolks. Located near Felpaw Village, the satyrs here are likely the source of the continuing corruption of the Felpaws, and I suspect they have their eyes on corrupting or killing the Timber Maws as well. Jadenar. I know perhaps too much of Jadenar's dark history. It was once a druidic barrow den, but members of the Shadow Council overtook it. Under Kill Jaden's hand, the orc warlock Gul'dan founded the Shadow Council to spread dark magic among the orcs. The warlocks murdered the druids sleeping here and renamed the site in honor of Kil'jaeden. 
Beldon, the current leader of the Shadow Council, plans with the Dreadlord Bane Hollow within Shadow Hold, Hold, which was once the largest of the Barrow Dens. Archimonde appointed Bane Hollow during the Third War and tasked him with the cultivation of a network of fanatical spies who would infiltrate and corrupt the lands of mortals. The majority of the residents here are satyrs, <clears throat> but there are a number of other demons and corrupted mortals residing in the walls of Jadenar as well. I think there are a lot of quests if you plumb your way down into Jadenar. Talon Branch Glade, a small night elf homestead. This is as close to Alliance territory as you'll find in Felwood. This amounts to a single house, a hippogriffus, and a few friendly if edgy night elves. I didn't find out about Talon Branch until after my initial visit, since it's quite a ways off the beaten path. <coughs> Timbermall Hold. After helping the Timbermalls against the Deadwood and Felpaw Furbolgs, I was able to gain enough of their trust to gain access to their town. Timbermall Hold is impressive, and it reminded me a bit of home. Almost exclusively underground in a system of tunnels, it also contains simple wooden homes inside. Well-sculpted paths led to Moonglade and Winterspring. Apparently, it contains tunnels to Azjara and Mount Hygel as well, but those aren't available to everyone. The Furbolgs here work with the Druids of Moonglade frequently, and are some of the staunchest allies of the Night Elves in the Alliance. If the Scourge ever reappears here, I'm sure the Furbolgs will be some of the most valuable additions to our forces. However, there are rumors of an insane Furbolg leading the clan. Okay. Aridin's explanation. We've been working hard to oppose the efforts of the Shadow Council, a group of warlocks and demons. The Council slaughtered many of our sleeping brothers and sisters in Barrow Den to the northwest and took it over, renaming it Jadenar. These horrible creatures are led by a dreadlord named Lord Banehollow, who continually pushes to corrupt and destroy more of our land. We are slowly beginning to find cures for the diseased plants here, but the animals seem beyond our abilities for now. History. Once a beautiful region of rolling hills and flowing streams, Fellwood was much like modern Ashenvale before the coming of the Burning Legion. During the Third War, this area was the point to which the demons summoned their infernals to lay siege to Mount Hygel, and the site of several bloody battles. The devastation scarred the land forever, and many of the remaining demons choose to reside here after Archimonde's fall. Recently, a few brave adventurers from both the Alliance and the Horde constructed encampments here, but the major force opposing the demonic presence is the Druids of Moonglade. The Druids lost many of their friends in the slaughter of the Barrow Den, and that tragedy spurred the Druids into a frenzy greater here than anywhere else on Kalimdor. Adventures. The demon-filled lands of Felwood are one of the easiest places to find adventure. Nearly every acre of the forest is inhabited by some sort of monster. That being said, the majority of adventurers don't survive long here. Only the most experienced or suicidal of travelers should attempt to fight against the forces of darkness here. And here's an adventure hook. Corruption most foul. Aridan Blue Wind of the Emerald Circle has discovered that Lord Banehollow has been teaching the Shadow Council necromantic magic and perhaps even grooming them to begin a new scourge. When the PCs investigate, they find that the situation is worse still. Feldon has learned how to reanimate the deceased druids of Jadenar into intelligent undead druids who retain many of their abilities. These undead druids have such an intimate knowledge of nature that they're able to spread the corruption of Felwood much further and faster than normal. Okay, so technical difficulties aside, we've we've made it through and survived another episode and learned a little bit, or maybe a lot, about Felwood. I thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of Lore of Warcraft. Thanks for bearing with me. This episode in the pipe. Bye bye five.